On this week's episode of Devil's Trap Podcast, we learn about go away powder and old donkey teeth. Let's do this. this week's episode of devil's trap podcast i'm diana i'm liz and we're gonna talk about season nine episode 16 blade runners which had nothing to do with blade runners whatsoever not really there was an umbrella nothing 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 yeah so uh what have you been up to liz well uh last week i did get to do another one of the momentous what do you call events I guess sure. event. Web event. Uh, this yeah. yeah, this was a, an event of the Ruth Connell's "Go Smudge Yourselves" that she does at the cons. She did that over at stands, momentous, whatever you want to say. But it was fun. Her voice is, man, like can I just have a, a lovely Scottish lady like talk to me all about like magic and stuff? Because you know whether or not like what she was saying is legit, like you just believe her. Because like this like little lilting Gaelic, it's like oh you just charge us under the moon, and this is this is a good time, you know, to like do things for like you know to, to manifest stuff. I'm like sure, sure, I believe you. Yeah, just keep talking. Just keep talking. So that was very sweet, and. <clears throat> They sent everybody, you know, some smudge and Palo Santo and a crystal so you could, like, charge that if you wanted to and to do whatever you wanted to do with those things. So that was fun. And then last weekend I went to, because it's, you know, it's like it's spooky season, but also yeah. because it was a Saturday, I went to a seance. And I went to a seance at Villa Finale, which is one of the old houses in King William District where I really, you know, I love that part of San Antonio. It's just the the coolest part of town. And so we, uh, the Austin seance put on a fun seance uh, there and we had a good time. I didn't, I didn't see a ghost, but you know, other people think that we connected and there were, were things that happened. People in my group thinks that, you know, so, Hey, some people saw ghosts, some people didn't, but I also got to hang out in a cool old house and watch people be spooky which is just as much fun as being spooky i don't know like whether or not you see a ghost like it's the act of doing the seance is my is my jam okay yeah Yeah, and being in in the cool environment yeah yeah i mean it's like you get to go in a house and like they're austin seance is very spiritualist oriented and you know both albert and jake dress like they're you know they're they're don't dress victorian they just kind of have nods to it right so you're already you're in an old-timey house with guys who are leading you in an old-timey seance and all the lights are out and you know candles are going although they're not real candles because it's an old house they don't want to burn it down you know right 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 that's good good call Good call. So yeah, that was, that was my weekend and we're going to try and get like one more seance maybe at the, the Curious Twins are doing one at the, the Haunted Doll Hospital. Oh no. No. So. Wait, is it a hospital for dolls? Yes. I think this is what it's called. I don't know. I think it's a doll store. But I think the Haunted Doll Hospital is like where girlies would take their dolls when they were broken. Absolutely. But it's just full of haunted dolls, or just all dolls are haunted. Didn't you play with fire too? No, I did also play with fire. See, I mean, my life is boring. You've been busy. It is busy. Fire yeah, seances. So, all yeah, I, uh, one of my the circus schools is doing a fire class for the first time, and that was pretty fun. Although, I mean, we just haven't gotten to the difficult stuff, and they're not going to teach us how to eat fire. They're going to teach no. us like we're doing like fire flow. Okay. Which is just kind of dancing with fire. But in the end, that's also just kind of dancing with fire. And I don't really know if I needed a class to do that. There's a couple of, like, the props that I, I need class in. But I'm not sure. I, like, the fans. So the, yeah. they have, like, the five wicks on them. Like, uh-huh. people were using them last week. And I'm not – I don't – I think I have too much ADHD for those fans. 
I, I don't I don't think that one's going to work out for me. We'll no. we'll see. But you know, I was using a little little uh, the torches, which have the two things. But I don't know. I was kind of feel like I'm shaking fire around. I'm like, yeah, I I, I burned myself a couple times, but not too bad. Oh, that sounds that sounds exciting. Yeah, it was fine. Like, eh. Whatever, fire. But they are you know, flush. I'm, I'm looking forward to flushing, which is you know when you set yourself on fire, like just like a little bit. That scares me a little bit. That sounds fun. Uh, well, typically you have like gloves on and stuff That's too. True. They have little gloves that you can put on for it. But yeah. I also find that, and maybe it's just like a modern the modern world of aerials and circus schools. Like people just want to tape themselves doing things a lot, so. There's just a lot of, you know, like people spinning around videoing themselves doing this to like, I guess, to send to people and post to stuff. And I'm oh. like, I just want to learn how to do this. I don't necessarily need to see videos. I You're not guess. making content. You're not there to make content. I'm not making content. So. But if you do have some content, send it my way. I'll post it to our stories. <laughs> just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah. Uh, anyways. Uh. So. That, so that was that. And uh, there's, the class should be continuing tomorrow, hopefully. Nice. And what about you? Uh, I've been in bed for days. I had a uh, an elective procedure of the cosmetic type. So I've been laying around and watching a lot of trash TV. Uh, yeah. I did finally watch the new Beetlejuice and very much enjoyed it. Oh, so there, it's already on digital? Yeah, I, had to, I mean, you had to pay to rent it. It's not like streaming for free, but yes. You but yeah, I didn't know that it was already on Yeah, you can way. rent that one online. And so we watched that. And so I actually really enjoyed it. Um, yeah, I thought they did a really good job. I mean, it's not going to be the original. So I was happy with that. And then um, what else? Yeah, just a lot, of, a whole lot of trash TV. whole lot of trash TV, guys. But yeah. It's okay. Sometimes, you know, you need to watch other yeah. people's made up drama. Yes. I would recommend the dark side of reality TV. That's a oh, really fun that show that Vice has put that out right fun. now. That does it's not sound so fun. It's so good. It's like about like how reality, like there are things like I didn't know. And like, I know because I don't watch trash TV. So I'd rather watch behind the scenes of trash TV. Yeah. So like they did the whole one on the surreal life. Yeah. And there was so much of that show, but I didn't even know it happened. Like all the Brigitte Nelson and Flavor Flav, like them fucking on the, like in the house, like while like Dave Couillé is like in the room, like that's just, who can get it on while Dave Couillé is in the room? Like I cut it out, man. Well, yeah, I did. I did. That was a pretty good, that was a good, that was a good one. I appreciate that. Thank you. But yeah, by, by my trash TV, obviously, I mean reality TV. So, yeah, um, I didn't just watch that. I did watch the just like it's like a sitcom rom com type thing um, on Netflix called Nobody Wants This. It's yeah, cool. and it's I good. like Kristen Bell. It looks it fine. It just it looks fine. too it was entertaining. I just not the room. I can't rom com right now. No, it's very, I'm just it anti love in general. And <laughs> um, but yeah, other than that, I'm counting down to my car show. Our car show is this weekend, Saturday, the Saturday, October 26th, Invasion Car Show in Deep Bellum, Texas. Invasioncarshow.com. Exciting. Yeah. That's what I got. Cool, cool. All right. You ready to talk about this episode? Yeah, let's do it. So, as I said, Blade Runners has nothing to do with Blade Runner. Mm-mm. I guess it talks about a blade. And they're know. looking for it? I don't know. Yeah. Eh, running around looking for a but no, there was no science fiction or anything, which would have been cool. Maybe Dean in like a Blade Runner outfit. I would take that. Um, anything. Just give me some goddamn Blade Runners. Anyway, so this was season nine, episode 16. It aired March 18th, 2014. Was directed by Serge Ladoucière, if I can't say French. And written by Brad Buckner and Eugenie Ross Lemming. So in our recap, mm-hmm. we start off with Men's of Letters. Yep. Men of Letters, we talk about how to hack an angel, and then we go deep into Cain, the mark of Cain, the first blade, and Crowley. Yep. And we cut to Sam, and he is reading about Cain and Abel. Right. And Dean is trying to get in touch with Crowley and being very unsuccessful. He just, but he, he's leaving voicemail after voicemail. Crowley's been missing for weeks. He's supposed to be finding the fucking first blade, but whatever. And I guess all Dean has from Crowley is a 
voicemail that's a potential drunk dial? It's Yeah, it sounds like a call I used to make in my 20s a lot. And so, you know, it's 3 o'clock in the morning and just cycling through which friends will answer the phone at that time because you don't want to go to bed yet. Uh, yeah, and Crowley's voicemail says that he's too busy inflicting pain to answer. Yeah. So when Dean calls again, we see that Crowley's phone says, not moose. Yes, which is funny. And it's laying on top of some lingerie because Crowley is wearing satin, black satin pajamas and is in bed with Lola. And um, immediately I was like, is he wearing a suit in bed? I was very confused for a minute. It <laughs> took me a minute. Also, to be clear, I was also on pain meds when I watched this. So <laughs> apologies if I can't read my notes and or have weird observations today. But, um, and he like sends her to the closet to go get a, to fill a syringe from a dude that's hanging up by his wrists in the closet for his treat. Yeah. So he is injecting human blood is the long and the short of this. And then she runs out to go run errands and she returns with pizza boxes and a bottle of champagne. And I'm like, girl, we can party anytime I'm in. But there we go. So, um, and uh, no, uh, apparently Crowley's gone a little bit haywire while she was gone. He has killed the guy that was in the closet and is crying and watching movies in bed. Watching Casablanca, to be specific. Right. Yeah. He's not just crying to any movie. Well, yeah, that's true. Fair enough. Yeah. So uh, we cut to a warehouse where Lola is meeting up with one of Abaddon's minions because she is betraying Crowley. Of course she is. And this minion tries to blow her off from seeing Abaddon. And she tells him that the king only wants pizza, sex, and human blood. Plus those Winchesters keep calling and talking about the first blade. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And she'll report back, but next time she does, she expects to meet with Abaddon herself. So, Sam and Dean, though, have decided that whatever the fuck's going on, that a crossroads demon is going to help them find Crowley. So, there you go to the crossroads. And well, no, 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 they don't. Well, they go to a crossroads, but they oh, yeah. make a giant devil's trap. Yes. They do make a giant devil's trap at the crossroads and they do their summoning and who appears? Well, the, yeah, I just want to say that Sam is just spitting out Latin now because that's where we are. Like, so we're no longer like reading from books or anything. Sam oh, just no. like has a crossroads demon summoning spell just at sense. the tip of his tongue. He's like, In boom, Latin. boom, 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 boom. Yeah. By the way, here's fucking Snooky. Yeah. And it's Snooky. So my name is Nicole now, not Snooky. And that explains a lot, apparently. So, anyways. Speaking uh, of reality TV. Right? Though I will say that was one I did not watch. But I know who she is. I didn't watch Jersey Shore. Yeah, see, I don't get it. You what, you say you watch trash TV and yet you don't watch Jersey Shore? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, it's just very selective in my... <laughs> very selective in my trash TV. Anyways, so Sam is threatening her with the demon blade to talk. But um, she wants to... Because they just want to know what's going on with Crowley. And about how the showbiz is going to be real tough without his help if he doesn't retain control of hell. So basically saying like, hey, you better fucking help us because we're going to figure out what's going on with Crowley. Because if Crowley's not in charge, you ain't got your fucking gig, bitch. Yeah. And then I also had to look up how tall Nicole was because her in this trap with the boys was so she's hilarious. So there's just like tiny little Snooky in the tube of like Jensen Aggles. And you could tell they were trying to film the shot. So it wasn't like that noticeable, but it yeah. was. Mm-hmm. And I'm totally three inches taller than her. And that's the first person I've ever like found that I'm taller than. So that's Yay. great. Yay. Liz is taller than Snooky. Yes, noted. Uh, so either way, she's like, yeah, hell's fucking crazy. Um, the loyalists are all starting to turn to look at Abaddon. And they're like, cool, cool, cool. You all don't know where he is either. So they're going to exercise her. Rude. She did not like that. Uh, back at Crowley's hotel room that he's like chilling in with Lola. She has been shopping. And he, she, but she also brought him a bag of blood Oh, and she's going to get him a syringe. And like, why wasn't he doing this in the first place? 
I don't know. And she, also, and why are you using that syringe? That syringe is a bot. It's like a 19th century you know, like version of how you take things out. Like there are much like better medical equipment that you could be using. Right. And that, but also he fucking knows she's a rat and flings her for ta- tattling on him to Abaddon's people. So she's been sold out or he just knew. I don't know. Oh, also he was reading Little Women. Well, she's I just think like it's funny. That's what his humanity is. His humanity sends him to read Little Women. Yeah, and so she's he's she's like tries to argue with him, and he just stabs her with the angel blade, and then injects himself as the song "Heroin" by the Velvet Underground. Plays. And it's been stuck in my head. Like, oh, get it? Like, it'll go away, and then all of a sudden, be like, eh. And then I was, and then like it just makes you want to bang heroin, and then you're like, no, I don't. But you're like, this song makes it sound cool. God damn it, Lou Reed. So heroin's uh. playing, and then Crowley is this is just looking around his smelly, smelly room because this room is full so of dead people. Bad. Three dead people, old food, some blood. He's probably not bathing consistently. Where are the flies, man? Gross. Like this room is gross. Yeah. So they're definitely not letting housekeeping in. Let's say that. Um, Sam is the, back at the bunker is researching the Mariana Trench and because that's where fucking Crowley was supposed to be looking for the first blade and Dean's got beer. So they're going to talk about like, what if this was a double cross and Dean's like, no, cause Crowley needs me with my fucking Margaret Kane to use the first blade to kill Abaddon. But also they seem fine. Did all this shit just, ha- like, everything that we've been dealing with, is it gone now? Yes and no. They're kind of, like, kind of fine, kind of not. I don't know. But I don't they're know. Like- they seem like all the awkwardness is just kind of, like... Except that Sam is, like, kind of, like, weirded out about the Dean and Crowley relationship. I can well, I think that. he just is weird out because that's a weird relationship. Well, Why are you, true. like, buddy-buddy buddy with, with the King, King of, of Hell? Hell? That's true. And besides the fact that he's awesome and fun and I want to hang out with him. I mean, not this version of him. This version of it is well, gross. Too, well, but. too sad. Yeah. So, but Dean's phone rings and it's Crowley. He doesn't have the blade, but he does need help. So Sam and Dean show up at his nasty hotel room. And uh, he refers to the bodies laying around as refreshments. And he definitely has a bag of blood with him. And they're going to chain him to the flare. to Chain, whoa, whoa, chain him to the chair and and call him out for letting them down and for letting down his followers because this is an intervention it's so weird it's a very weird thing and you know they tell him that you know he's letting them down he's letting hell go to hell and he is just complaining that they don't know what it's like to be human yeah and because he has an addiction and Lola ratted him out to Abaddon's people but Sam's like whoa whoa well if she was ratting you out did she tell Abaddon's people about the fucking first blade? And he's like, I don't know. Probably. Which is a big fucking deal. Big yeah, deal. big deal. It and she a big did. Deal. So uh, either way, they are going to take him back to the bunker to quit cold turkey and chain him up where they had him before. So we go back to our bunker dungeon. Yeah. The file bunker cabinet. dungeon in the file room or yes, whatever? in the file room. <laughs> it's so random. <laughs> Uh, and Sam's just going to sit in there and research while they're doing it. And he wants to discuss the Mariana Trench and about how it's not there. The, the, but Crowley knows that the first blade used to be there, but it was picked up by an, un, or scooped up by an unmanned sub, then stolen by a research assistant, then sold to Portuguese smugglers, and then lost to Moroccan pirates in a poker game. That was correct. Huh. So he and um, Crowley is just still feeling sentimental as he stares down Sam, though. And he, he's just staring bonded. at Sam with a lot of feels, and it makes yeah, everybody feel awkward. Yeah, and Sam is has zero feels for Crowley. Let's be really clear mm-hmm. about that. Dean has like pretends like he has none, but you can tell he has a little bit of feels for Crowley. Mm-hmm. Sam is like, "Fuck your feels, Crowley." Yep. And then they just have decided that Abaddon is worse than Crowley for some reason. Like, I really don't understand where, D- and I know I brought this up before, but just like this hatred of Abaddon that they have and this like 
that well, this theory that she's so much worse than Crowley when like I think Crowley has demonstrated like over and over again he's bad and then they haven't seen that much from her besides the Men of Letters Massacre right well but I think that's implied that at least even though Crowley's bad he does follow rules like he likes rules but how do they know what doesn't. Abaddon's gonna do like they don't know her no that's true yeah like how do they even know what's going on in Other than her just saying she's not going to do, she ain't following shit. But that's about it. Yeah. No, you're right. Yeah. So I don't know. I just feel like they're overreacting. <laughs> well, they are going to go be Phoebes in the park at night while Crowley tries to break into a vending machine. I don't know. He's just trying to steal candy from it because he doesn't want to pay for it, which I think makes sense. And if you know, I'm not like I don't have that intrusive thought every time I'm in front of a vending machine. I need to stick my hand in there and get some free candy. Well, you want to know if it's possible. You just like it's it's just human well, nature to want to shove your hand yeah. inside a vending machine. I think that's just like everybody wants to do it. Anyhow, so they tell Crowley that he is the king of rotten and that he should act like it. Yeah, and then um, Mr. Devlin appears. He apparently has purchased the blade from the pirates and is shopping it around. Or he's not really the purchaser, but he is a broker trying to arrange the sale of the first blade. But they like, but he has no interest in dealing with the Phoebes. So, so he is going to leave if that's the case. But Crowley is sitting on the bench a little bit of ways and is listening to all this. And so he read... Redcock smokes out of himself, of his meat suit, into Mr. Devlin, and then goes back to the Crowley meat suit. And then the Mr. Devlin dude leaves, and Crowley knows where the first blade is. Yes, and there is just a lot of cock smoke in this episode. It's not even done yet. But the first braid blade is apparently at the National Institute of Antiquities in Kansas City, Missouri, which is not a place. The Institute, not Kansas City. Kansas City is a place I've been there. Kansas City, Missouri is a place too. It and is. Kansas City, Kansas. But... Yeah, they're both places. Uh, all right. So at that, they go there and well, we go we go there, excuse me, first. <laughs> we go as the viewers. And we've got two guards playing cards at night, and we get um two black cock smokes in, so we've got demons possessing them. And Yeah, I think you should be careful when you say the thing. We do black cock smokes. Oh, we get two demon smokes. <laughs> demon smokes in. Oh no. Ah, two black, two demon smokes in. So these security guards are being possessed by demons, and they unlock the vault, vault one. And then, as they're doing this, this woman walks in with Chinese food because she's just like nice. gonna be nice and bring them Chinese food during their shift. And gets her throat slit for it. And that's that rude. Is, it's so rude. It is. Very rude. So we cut to the next morning or whatever later. And there are two get dead guards, dead chick. And Sam and Dean are there with a detective. And basically the he's got the camera footage. This research assistant. The chick's a research assistant. And she walked in basically on the guards unlocking vault one. And then the footage shows the guards, like, shoot each other, but stay standing. It doesn't hurt them. And then they shoot the camera. Which I also think is weird that they shot the camera last. That is a weird choice. These are dumb, dumb demons. <laughs> like, shoot you, shoot you. Oh, wait, there's a camera. Oopsies. Gotta shoot that. Yeah. So, apparently, Vault 1 is normally to hold rare new acquisitions while they're being examined. But apparently it's been empty for weeks. And now they know that Abaddon is closing in on the first blade, which they are also after. So this is bad for their mission. I mean, obviously your point about why it matters is a separate one. But for their mission purposes, it's bad. And then we meet Dr. McElroy, who is going to very weirdly flirt with Dean. I don't know. It's very, everyone is very uncomfortable and he just, Dean like threatens to compel her to speak and it turns her on and everything she's, he says, she's coming back with like a weird innuendo, but it's all just like this weird cougar energy and everyone's just <gasps> uncomfortable, especially Sam. Uh, yeah. But basically Dean she- Dean kind of likes it. Yeah. He totally likes it. He is into this. The long and short of it is, though, she has acquired, yes, she acquired what is supposed to be the demon, the first blade, 
it's been carbon dated, but her authentication was unreliable. So she got a confidential offer to buy it and was going to go with that because she couldn't prove it was what it was. So he, Dean threatens her again with her. And she says that the buyer called himself Magnus. And then she gives her card and Sam tries to take it. He won't take it. Dean's the only one she wants and she leaves. And then Sam is like, hey, remember this is about like, remember Albert Magnus, the alias the men of letters used when they wanted to be incognito. So yeah. we're going to talk about Magnus. It's time for a little lore. <sighs> so first off, one thing you need to know is that people used to throw the word Magnus around all the time because it means the great. So you'll see a lot of like emperors and people like throughout time, there's this blah, 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 Magnus. So just know that, that, but there was an Albertus Magnus who was a 13th century Dominican friar, philosopher, scientist, and bishop. He did a lot of things. And he is considered Crazy. one of the greatest medieval philosophers and thinkers. So according to renaissanceastrology.com because why not albertus wrote on a whole range of subjects including the heavens the properties of the elements generation and corruption meteorology minerals and metals that's one word minerals and metals which sounds like a you know an album maybe the soul life and death youth and age nourishment so he's into food sleeping and waking the senses the intellect plants and animals he considered astronomy astrology to be the mirror of astronomy so astronomy is about the stars and they the stars guide men in their earthly affairs so in this extract from speculum astronomia or astronomy i don't know i don't speak latin i also don't know why they're talking about a speculum albertus discusses various astrological talismans and so he talks about which of them are evil and demonic and which are the product of natural magic and the natural power of the heavens so this is albertus's is his, his words okay as I have previously stated, the science of images is placed under the part of elections, but not all of them, but only the, those that are astronomical since the images are made in three ways. The first is a way that is abominable as it uses suffumigations, which is smoke, okay. and invocations, like a spell, which have stations for the worship of Venus. And then it goes off, blah, blah, blah. So apparently if you do things within smoke and they have a spell around them, they're evil. But good things, they're suffumigated with lignum, aloes, saffron, and balsam. And evil things with galbanum, red sandalwood, and resin. So don't smoke things out in galbanum and they won't become evil. I don't know what galbanum is. I'm just, just, just don't smoke that. There is another way that is a little less troublesome, but still detestable, which is done by writing characters by which certain names are exercised, as are the four rings of Solomon and nine candles and three figures of spirits, which are called the princes of the four places of the world and by the Amidal of Solomon, clearly, and the sigils of those possessed by evil spirits. So... Those things are detestable, and if you write characters on things to make a talisman, that's also going to be evil. All right, so you can't write it out. And then it goes on talking about some books and names and shit. Okay, the third way of making astrological images, which eliminates this filth and doesn't use suffumigations and invocations, nor exercises, nor characters or sigils, but gets its power from the arrangement of the heavens, as if there was made an image from the destruction of a particular thing in a particular place, when we have asked a horrorary question that is radical, with nothing either large or small cadent. And the significators signify destruction, Make the image under ascendant similar to the thing you wish to destroy or under the ascendant of the question and make Lord of the house and the death or malefic afflict the ascendant. Okay, he starts going off again. What he's saying is if you're going to make a talisman, you should do it under the constellation of the thing that is like the talent that is like the thing you want to do. Right. So according to him and astrology, all of the astrology houses mean different things, right? So 
if you're going to make them, then you have to carve these things onto stones and you have to do them underneath their constellation. Otherwise, they're going to be evil and full of filth. Okay. I like how he said it was filthy. So if you were to do the ram, which is Aries, the lion, which is Leo, or the archer, which is Sagittarius, by reason of fire and the eastern triplicity, this indicates that stones have a property against fevers and such infirmities as dropsy, paralysis, and the like. So if you have dropsy, which I know is something that we are quite concerned with, if you get a stone and you put a picture of a lion on it, but you have to do it underneath the constellation, I think, then uh, then you can cure it. And since heat has a beneficial effect, these are said to make the wearer skillful and clever and to raise into positions of honor in the world. The lion especially has this effect. Wow. Wow. The twins, Gemini, the scales, Libra, and the waterman, Aquarius, they are carved on so by reason of the triplicity of air and the west are said to predispose their wearers towards friendship and righteousness and good manners, diligent observation of laws and concord. So if you want to make somebody really boring and a suck up, you just draw like some twins on a on some rock and you throw it at them. I, I, he didn't include the part about throwing the stone, but you know, might as well. All right. So, and this is, and basically, if you can't get like we're going kind of by like the the north, south, east, west, right? Right. Okay. So the crab, Cancer, the scorpion, Scorpio, and the fishes, Pisces. If those are carved on stone by reason of the triplicity of water and the north, temper dry fevers like those called Ethica and Cossin and the like. You know the Ethica fever that you had last week. But according to the art of images, they produce an inclination towards lying and unrighteousness and inconstancy and licentiousness. Evidence of this is that the scorpion is the image of Muhammad who never taught anything except lies and unrighteousness. I don't know who Muhammad is. So, um, and if the bull, Taurus, the maiden Virgo, or the horned goat, uh, Capricorn, they call it Capricorn, Capricornus, are engraved upon stones by region, reason of the triplicity of Earth and South. They are cold and dry so far as their effects are concerned. Hence, they are said to cure their wearers of fainting fits and hot infirmities. Ooh, when are going to stop me from sweating? And they incline their wearers towards religious devotion and wards country occupations. You know, the country occupations like farming. And the planting right. of vineyards and gardens. Them country folk. So they like the Taurus. Ah. Uh, so there are some things that can be carved outside of the Zodiac. So if you carve a Pegasus, that is said to be good for soldiers and those who fight on horseback and on the battlefield. And to be efficacious against diseases of horses. Now, I'm not, say, I'm not sure if that is a disease the horse gives you. Or a horse that is diseased. It's not quite clear on that. But the image of Pegasus is half of a winged horse. You draw a half a winged horse on there. Okay. Let's see. Uh, there's Andromeda, and that's a girl turned sideways, seated upon a rock with straining hands. And this image engraved upon gems that are by nature conciliating in love. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, so... Um, this is said to reconcile even those who have been adulterous. So you draw a picture of a chick sitting on a rock and that'll make somebody stop fucking around, apparently. Cool, Cassiopeia cool. is a maiden sitting on an armchair with her arms unlifted and bent and this engraving brings sleep and restores the members to give rest after toil and to strengthen weakened bodies. Okay, I think I'm going to draw that one on some stuff. So it's a maiden sitting in an armchair with her arms uplifted and bent. I think it's like cactus arms. Cornholio? Cornholio? Okay, so the serpent bearer, Serpentarius Opicus, is a man with a serpent wrapped around his waist. He holds his head in his right hand and his tail in his left. That sounds saucy. And this image engraved upon a stone expels poison. Is ex Oh, it's effective against poisons. And to cure the bites of venomous creatures, whether it's worn or whether scrapings of it are taken and drink. Okay, so that is something I may need. Useful. So if you get bit by a snake, you can cut off pieces of this rock and eat it. And it'll cure you of your snake bite. I am not it a doctor. Sounds legit. 
Sounds legit. <laughs> Let's see. Um, all right. Where was that last one? Uh, well, so uh, the swan, you will get rid of quartan fever. Uh, Perseus will atta- help you um, be protected from attacks of the envious. The stag engraved with the hunter and dogs will heal madmen and maniacs. And the last one, near the North Pole in heaven, there are pictured two bears, Ursa Major and Ursa Minor, and between them is placed a twisting snake, Draco. And if this is engraved upon a stone, that gives wisdom and skill and will increase cunning and adroitness and bravery. So I think we learned a whole bunch of things that we can graffiti on. Please go carve this into your your places. No, no, no! Don't do that. We do not encourage you to, to commit vandalism. Please don't. Don't get caught. Okay, so well, I think there's a there. I think if you carve something into a rock, they'll protect you from getting caught. I'm sure there's. Sure. You have to, I'm sure there's one for that too. You have Absolutely. to do it under the right stars. You can't just you know not no. with that filthy smoke. No, no smoke. So that was oh. Albertus Magnus. Nice. Cool. So oh. they go back and they start talking about all these questions. And they start wondering, like, wait a minute. Do we really know if all the men of letters are dead? And I think Which, that's a pretty good question. It, also, it is a good question. They just assume they all got killed in 58. Yeah. So they go back to the bunker and they decide to finally ask Crowley what he knows about this. And mm-hmm. I do like that it's, it's gotten this title now, A Men of Letters Massacre of 1958. Yeah. It sounds really official. It does sound official. And Crowley's like, yeah, so um, sure, I'll tell you what you want to know, except I'm fucking pissed because I'm still trying to keep my end of the bargain, but y'all turned me into a junkie and then locked me up while my kingdom's falling apart. So fuck this shit. If you want my to tell you what I know, you got to get me out of the fucking dungeon. So they take him upstairs. And then he, you know, they take him upstairs and he's still handcuffed and he's bitching yeah. about the quality of scotch. And I'm like, are you still not the king of hell? Can you just not like get scotch delivered to you? Maybe not in the bunker. I don't know. Is it Either too way. warded to get scotch delivered? No drizzly Probably. comes here. I know, I know drizzly pulled it, but yeah. Uh, so they ask him and he, and while Crowley is perusing an issue of busty Asian beauties, the um, Crowley asks if they are looking at active members only of the Men of Letters. Um, what about rogue members that may have been tossed out? What about dudes who just retired? Well, Did that's nobody that's just like stop? Like, was the, were you in that until you died? Apparently so. I don't know. But Dean happens to upon a box infamati et obliterati, dishonored and forgotten. Nice. I like it. And they find information on Cuthbert Sinclair. What a good name. And apparently he's the one that designed all the wards for the bunker. And, but was just, his work was described as eccentric and irresponsible. Same. <laughs> ah, oh, I was deeply amused by that one. Um, and, but, but he basically proposed all these projects and they were always rejected and Crowley's like, yeah, he was brilliant and totally ahead of his time, but he got expelled in 1956. So uh, Crowley had tried to find him before um, because he wanted to get into the bunker, but um, now they're all going to go look for him. Yeah, and we're into the woods because demons tracked him to this random spot in the woods that Crowley remembers for some reason. Yeah. But he could never find him because it was too warded. I don't know. It's kind of vague. And they just like. Yeah, like where they take him to in the woods. It just looks very remote. And like, why would anybody remember this? Like, yeah. Okay. So Dean's like, well, I bet he's watching us. So Sam's going to start making an appeal that you want to hear. We want to hear your side. And all of a sudden, this weird smoky doorway appears. After they show their box. Yeah. After they show their men of letters box. And so Sam and Dean go through this weird smoky yeah, doorway. Yeah, they just portal. walk through a magic hole. Yeah, just stroll through it. That seems it fine. Very hole, hole just opened in the air. I was going to walk through it. it seems just, cool. Why not? Fine. And now they're in a fancy hallway. In my dream house. This is, yeah. <laughs> and then they get ambushed by vampires. Uh, also they, in my dream house. Who they fight and kill. 
And then they hear a voice overhead through like a loudspeaker say, bravo, well done. And they go into this fancy study where slash bar area where a guy is making a drink and apologizing for his theatricality. Yeah, and if you're looking around this house, he has like every painting that I've ever wanted to own, including, you know, the Witch's Sabbath by Francisco Goya. He's got Goya's Conjuration. He's got the Garden of Earthly Delights by Bosch. He's got the Head of Medusa. He's got Oedipus and the Sphinx. Like, just like every sexy, weird occulty painting. Yeah. I'm very jealous. Oh, it has Invisible Fortress. So, uh, anyways, and it, apparently they didn't get transported and they're not underground. They are literally right where they were standing. It was just that well warded. And he doesn't, he hasn't heard his name in a very long time. Um, and, uh, he definitely does not look like he's 90 something years old, but as he points out, there's a spell for damn near everything. Um, but he's going to miss those two vampires from his zoo. Yeah, we almost did a whole thing on, and he's collecting, what we figure out is he's collecting things, uh, art pieces, and also, things. I guess, you know, not the occult, I mean, just supernatural. Supernatural, shit. yeah. Yeah. So, super, but actual supernatural beings, which is... In addition to artifacts, yeah. Yeah, that's not okay. That's not cool. But he's apparently, he has the biggest collection of supernatural rarities and antiquities on the planet. And he really also thought that the men of letters had died out in 1958, which they basically did. Um, and is deeply amused that Sam and Dean are hunters and are now the only ones left, basically. Yeah, I really appreciate all of the people who think hunters are just like these big baboons that are running around killing things and not asking questions, which I mean, they kind of are. But yeah. the, just like that. And then just by looking at Sam and Dean, just being like, you're hunters. And that's hilarious. Yeah. And he um, calls, he basically is mocking the men of letters and calling them librarians. But he also shares that he was Henry Winchester's mentor. And apparently Henry visited him after he was expelled, which is Ooh, Henry, you naughty boy. Yeah. So Dean's just going to go in. He's like, here's the situation with Abaddon. Um, you know, we, you know, and C uh, Cuthbert's like, oh, let's, let's, uh, you know, all, all the men of letters wanted to do was study. He just keeps talking about that. And Dean's like, cool, cool. I want the first blade. And I think you have it. And Kepert's like, well, yeah, that's nice. But you gotta have the man, the mark of Cain. And Dean shows that he has it. Yeah. Dean shows off his sick brand and Cuthbert gets a boner. He does. And Sam's like, yeah, see, uh, Abaddon wants to hell on earth. So that's why we have to stop her. And Calvert's like, yeah, sure, here it is. And it's like, this is where we finally like actually see it. We've seen it teased before, but like we talked about when we first got teased about it, is that it's basically like a jawbone. It is a donkey jaw. It, welcome Don to the grossest do knife that was ever made. It's a <laughs> donkey jaw. Donkey jaw. So um, Dean's like, cool, Let me. can I borrow it? If you loan us the blade, we will stop the bitch. Why do you hate her so much? Like, I just don't get it. Because she wants hell on earth. Again, I just, I feel like this just went really fast. She has killed a lot of people and says she wants, yes, says they she met her like twice. No. She, she was cut up for most of the time. Like, Well, but they know she did the massacre of 58. She knows they they killed more though. people than the massacre oh, of, of 58. Oh, I'm not saying they haven't. I'm just saying. Uh, yes. Okay. So, and, and Cuthbert's, Cuthbert's like, like, I don't give a shit. He's like, yeah, I'm going to ponder this. I'm going to think about it. But nope, I'm going to blow this powder in Sam's face and make him disappear. Bye. And he just get kicks out of the house. And God damn, I wish I had go away powder. And so Sam gets Can we to manufacture that go away powder. <gasps> Oh, uh, well, Sam gets to Crowley and tells him that Magnus has Dean. So, uh, anyway, Dean's like, what the fuck? What did you do to Sam? And he's like, oh, I did what any collector would do. I separated the ordinary from the extraordinary. Great. 
So basically now we figure out that Cuthbert wants to collect Dean as his next specimen because he has the mark of Cain, like to go with the blade. I mean, but the thing is, Sam's a pretty good ses- specimen too. I mean, he once was filled with demon blood, right? Mm-hmm. And like that got yeah, carried out of him. He went through the trials. He had Trace of an, Grace. Yeah, he has an angel up inside him, right? Like <sighs> he's I would say that he's also I would collect Sam Winchester. I mean, that you've got a very valid point. I don't know why Cuthbert is just unimpressed, but it's his loss. <sighs> Cuthbert's a snob. So anyways, yeah. he tries and- to convince Dean that Dean can be young forever. And be part of the greatest collection of all time. Which is weird. Yeah. And teach his secrets and be his companion. And as Dean points out, this is very creepy. So, so, so creepy. And, but there's no windows. There's no doors. Yeah. So Dean can't just grab the blade and leave. Um, And so... There you go. You're uh, and Cuthbert's also managed to steal Dean's gun, so Dean's just gonna have to be part of the collection now. Yeah, Thanks, if he'd bye. had a holster, so he probably could have pickpocketed it so easily. I'm just saying, maybe you hadn't shut <sighs> the peach. Yeah, they do make holsters. Pants they make holsters. I don't know why. Why does no one on the show want to use holsters? Anyways, so we go back outside and we get to see Trunk. Yay! Yay. Team Trunk. So, uh, and Crowley's just like, uh, hey, you know, Sam, we're on the same team. How can I help here? And Sam's like, mm, not interested. Let me look at these files. Uh, hey, Crowley, you are useless here because of all these wards. So, sorry. And Crowley's like, no, you, you need another set of hands. Remember, I helped find Kane in the first Kane. I helped get Gadriel out of you. Like, let me help. And Sam's like, mm, you need to shut the hell up kind of rude kind of rude uh, and so back in the invisible fortress which i feel has to be said that way oh, Cuthbert, yeah it has the first blade can in we, yeah i was like okay this is like my perfect house like nobody can see it like you, can, you get some go away powder like it's full of like my favorite paintings like this sounds great except for like you know the, the human zoo? enslavement of, 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 of beings beyond that it sounds like my perfect house well, he's Dean's just talking shit because that's what Dean does. And he's like, oh, you're just hiding here and you want to play with this first blade. And he's like, whatever. So he puts the blade in Dean's hand and the mark starts glowing. We have a very intense moment. And then De- Dean yeah, drops Dean it. gets a boner and I'm very uncomfortable. And then Dean drops it and Cuthbert's like, it'll be easier next time. You'll get used to it. Yeah, and the mark is just like lighting up and throbbing. It's just all very awkward, and and I don't like it. So Sam's still researching. It's now nighttime, and um, he is talking about how they basically they they need to do a spell so that they can find the entry to get back into Cuthbert's place. And so back in Cuthbert's, which is just, this is one of those bounce back and forth ones. Anyway, yeah, it's fine. he's like, nothing can stop us. Ugh. Yeah. Anyway. He's just trying to woo Dean and Dean's yeah. just like, you know what? I'm just going to take a knee on this one. Yeah. Uh, the blade's useless without me. So ta-da. And he's like, Oh no, you don't have to, co- I'm not asking for your cooperation. I'm going to spell you into being brainwashed to help me, which is very creepy. It is. And he takes over his will. And so that's happening. And we cut back to Crowley, who is weirdly telling Sam, I did good, a moose. And that also, I do not like that. No? No. We went to get all the spell ingredients for Sam? (sighs) Just, I don't like Crowley looking for validation. I hate it. Oh. Well, Sam Sam shuts it down again and is not impressed. Um, so, but he did get all the ingredients. So Sam's able to do the spell and make a door appear so he can go try to save Dean. And he runs down the hallway. He sees, he hides from Cuthbert, uh, and Crowley's with him in the house now and he hides, but, it, and I'm also very distracted because all of a sudden I noticed that there are bright white thermostats on the walls of the invisible fortress, which I just don't understand if he's relying that much on magic and this house was built in the fifties. Would it have modern digital white thermostats on the wall? And don't they distract from the aesthetic? 
Yeah, but, you know, sometimes you got to make sure that you have the right HVAC, you know, system for all of your antiquities. They have to have a certain amount of temperature, a certain amount of humidity control. So it's important that, you know, we upgrade when you can. Well, once you see it, you get very distracted. I also just don't understand why he didn't have an alarm, right? Like, was he just so full of so much pride that he didn't think anybody would would be able to find the house in the first place? No, the wards. He was so dependent on the wards. But either way, they, he's all excited because he's going to put a knife to Cuthbert's throat. But um, they it's actually not Cuthbert because this is a shapeshifter from the zoo, which is creepy as shit. And now, so now both Dean and Sam are chained up to columns, which seem very, very, very prepared for chaining people to in the middle of this study. Yep, there's very convenient columns there to tie people to. With with little gold O-rings on them to chain people to. I'm sure it's not the first time. No. So basically now, new plan is instead of just having to control Dean's will, he'll also threaten Sam with pain to make Dean do what he wants. Yeah. Which, which will work. It'll work. So he cuts... Say he to make Sam suffer and cuts him twice, including his face, which is just rude to start there. Uh, and as that's happening, Crowley sneaks in and is able to free Dean, who immediately grabs the first blade and decapitates Cuthbert. Yay! Yeah, but then he holds the blade and gets weird. He gets real weird, and he's shaking, and his face is twitching, and Sam it's has to Elvis call slip. out. To him. It is very so Elvis much slip. Elvis lip. A lot. And Sam calls to him to be able to connect, and then Dean drops the blade. Hmm. Yep, so they just leave this house. They assume that Cusport's dead. And they just leave all that shit there, and he's beheaded, and they just leave all these beautiful things in this house. The six shit should all go to the bunker immediately. This is like rarest antiquities. Think of all the weapons and all the things that are in here. Sad. And they could have freed the zoo. They just leave them all in there to like die? <sighs> yeah. Anyways, this this all seems weird. So but they leave and they just go tromping through the woods. Yeah, and they find that baby's doors are all open because she has been rifled through. Oh no, the, the demons have been there. And not only have they gone through baby, they have keyed her in a Nokia. <laughs> because demons are talking in a Nokia now. Yeah, but it's even weirder that what I find also amusing here is that what Sam and Dean don't know what a Nokian looks like. This is kind of, I've seen a Nokian plenty of times. Like, what is this? And Crowley's like, it's it's a Nokian. Okay, you guys have seen this before, but it's a message for Crowley. It says, "Be afraid, your queen." Oh, which is you know, it's a message to leave. I mean, I'm not I'm not mad at it, but and so. That happens. Sam tell tries to tell Dean that it's time to ki- kill Crowley. Yeah, but Crowley knows that this is about to come down, and so he's going to pin them to baby, monologue for a little while, and then he knows that they're going to kill him. So in the meantime, what he's going to do is he's going to hold on to the first blade. What is he until? Call it? Oh, you didn't write down what he called it. He calls it old donkey teeth. I'm yeah, going to hold on to old donkey teeth here. <laughs> until they actually locate Abaddon and it's actually time to kill her. Which is kind of reasonable. I think so. And, um, yeah. He, the, the blade's no good without Dean, so he's just going to hold on to it. And Sam, a.k.a. Moose, is right. You can't trust him. And he can't trust them. And he flaps away, and now they're free. That's our episode. That's our episode. So, we're, did you got people to talk about? Casting couch. It's the casting couch. Were they on that show that time with that guy? La 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 la. We do have a few folks. Our cast this week, um, 
Nicole, aka Snooky, our who is Snooky cro- played by <laughs> Crossroads Demon, was played by Nicole Polizzi. So I do want to share just a little bit. You know, obviously she's known as Snooky from Jersey Shore and this Jersey Shore Family Vacation, which is a follow-on series. She also um, did a spinoff show with Jay Wow called Snooky and Jay Wow, which she was also a writer and producer on. Mm-hmm. And then she did Dancing with the Stars several years ago and had a cameo in the Three Stooges movie in 2012. Um. Our Cuthbert Sinclair was played by Kevin Smith, K-A-V-A-N is his first name. He, just, he's in a handful of, um, of Supernatural episodes different as different characters. Um, he has also been in episodes of Buffy, The Crow, Outer Limits, Smallville, True Calling, Battlestar Galactica, and a lot of the Stargate associated shows. He was Nicholas in the movie Mission to Mars. Um he was a Jed as a reoccurring character in the 4400 and has done a lot of Hallmark related movies. Lola, our demon was played by Rebecca Marshall. Uh, she's been in episodes of CSI Miami, two and a half men. She had a very small role in repo genetic opera and was Suzanne in saw 3d. Dr. McElroy, um, our uh, researcher, was played by Laura Soltis. She's been in episodes of Arrow, Schitt's Creek, um, uh, Death uh, Death in Ohio a handful of times. Uh, she was a stylist in Step Up All In. And uh, she's done a ton of Hallmark as well. And then Andre Devlin, our facilitator of the sale, is played by Mario Soriano. He's been in episodes of Fringe, Once Upon a Time in Wonderland, Lucifer, Arrow, Nancy Drew with Kung Fu, and had a small role in uh, Always Be My Maybe. Mm-hmm. So yeah, no, um, it was, I'm very torn about this episode because it felt very incongruous in a lot of ways. Like you said, like the battle between the brothers was kind of just like not there. Some of it just didn't really line up canon wise, but it was fun and weird. I don't know. Like, I, I, it makes me very torn about it. Does Is that make sense? a secret house full of cool stuff? Yeah, I mean, that was kind of a neat storyline. Like, having the secret man of letters dude who's just been hiding out in this house, which is also kind of fucking depressing, by the way. But, like, it was interesting in that way, but it was also... It just, it just felt like it... I don't know. It carried the story forward, which is important with Crowley and the first blade and Abaddon, but also like, it was just weird in that, like those little bits that you, like you pointed out that just didn't fit with what's going on in the rest of the storyline either. Yeah. No, I mean, I like the name Cuthbert. I wish he wasn't so gross. Cause he seems like, it's one of those things. He's very Crowley, Alice or Crowley. Like, you know, I think probably a lot of this was perhaps based on that too. Just the idea of the, you know, the chaos magician, but yeah, I mean, duh. Of course, not all the mental letters are dead and morons. There you go. Yeah. But beyond that, I mean, eh, I, I don't, you know, I hope Crowley's clean now. I hope he he's, can stick to his program. Does he get, I hope he gets a chip that says, like, I've been blood free for like a week, you know, and he can, maybe it like goes to a meeting. And... Yeah, but that means it would have to be the Sam and Dean, and they aren't going to be supportive. Well, he does I not mean, have a good, people... Is Dean his sponsor? I, I think Dean would want to be his sponsor probably, but yeah. I don't think Dean's in the right position to be doing anybody's sponsor right I now. I think you're correct. Because he's getting boners while he's holding a donkey, old donkey teeth. Yeah, old donkey teeth. Old donkey teeth! All right. <sighs> um, anything besides old donkey teeth? Nope. All right. Uh, cheers, jerk! <laughs> cheers, <laughs> Devil's Trap Podcast is a Don't Get It production. Meow. Devil's Trap Podcast is part of the Ship It Studios Podcast Network. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of Devil's Trap Podcast. You can follow us on Instagram at Devil's Trap Podcast, Twitter at Devil's Trap Pod, or you can email us at Devil's Trap at Devil's Trap Podcast.com. Don't forget to subscribe, leave reviews, and share with all your friends. We're at all your favorite podcast outlets and at DevilsTrapPodcast.com. I'm Babe. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.